Welcome. In this session, we will be talking about various theories that led to origin of Earth. Now, when we are talking about origin of Earth, there are numerous theories. We will be talking about the major theories that's around 10 to 12 theories we'll be covering. In this session, we'll be covering four basic theories to start with. The first is the gaseous theory, the nebular theory, the planetesimal uh, theory, and finally the tidal theory. So let's start with the first theory that's the gaseous mass theory given by Kant. Now this is one of the most uh, ancient theories I would say that has been propounded in 1755 by Immanuel Kant and the basic idea behind this theory was uh, we'll be trying to understand that with help of these magnets as you can see we have three magnets here. So what he explained was there are small masses that are present and these are known as nebula. Over the time there is a gravitational pull that acts between the nebulas that we can see and finally that leads into two things. The first is the increase in angular velocity and the second is the increase in temperature. Now if I try to demonstrate it here, there are various small masses that are at present in the atmosphere which are known as nebula. They are small cold masses and due to gravitational pull, they try to come close to one another as you can see here. So they try to come close to one another. When they are coming close to one another, there would be increase in the angular velocity and increase in temperature. Increase in temperature would lead to increase in the gaseous state. So there would be higher gaseous uh, state and then increase in the angular velocity would re, uh, lead to rise in the centrifugal force. And this centrifugal force that would uh, be responsible for generation of the concentric rings that would be formed and these concentric rings would later form the planets. So that was what Kant tried to explain. His theory was among one of the most simplest theory that was propounded. The only uh, thing that was problematic with his theory was we can say angular velocity is directly proportional to the mass but if that was true then the angular velocity of the planets would be less than the sun and that is not true in the present day state. So this, this could not be proved under the Kant's theory that was its one of the major criticism that Kant's theory faced and finally it could not explain. Uh, the lot of gravitational force from where did it originate the reason behind the origin of this uh, gravitational pull between the nebula. So his theory as you can see was very simple what he tried to explain was there are solid masses of uh, there are solid cold masses present in the uh, outer world that is nebula and due to gravitational pull they come together that leads to increase in angular velocity which gradually leads to centrifugal force which finally generates concentric rings forming the planets and this process goes on for subplanets or satellites. So that was the basic idea that was propounded by Kant. The next theory was a bit interesting theory which was given by Laplace and Laplace in his theory tried to explain the process of how planets are created or earth is formed by means of one concept that was radiation. The first thing that he tried to explain was the nebula is hot. So the first thing was nebula is hot and it emits radiation. When it is hot and it is emitting radiation it would, le it would lead to increase in the velocity again and increase in the rotation. So there would be higher velocity and higher rotation. So as you can see this is the first stage okay. So <clears throat> if you consider these magnets this is the first stage 
when there is higher velocity and higher rotation it would lead to bulge towards the center and that bulge would slowly and gradually uh, move out from the main part and that would be formed around a ring and it will try to rotate around the nebula so you have this nebula consider this to be a sun and this uh, this part which bulged out get separated and this separate parts try to follow an orbit around the nebula or the sun so we can say this was the formation of planet and similarly there was formation of the satellite around the planet in the same fashion so his basic idea was the nebula are hot bodies which emit radiation when they cool they shrink as a result there is higher velocity and higher rotation which leads to centrifugal force and there are ring formations as explained in the Kahn's theory so he tried to pull out some idea from the Kahn's theory this was pro propounded in around 19, uh, 1792 or 1795 so we have this as the next theory in place that was Laplace theory. Now this theory is uh, regarded as a good theory because the major merit of this theory was uh, it explained that all the planets move in the same direction and in the same path always. So that was the first advantage that this theory explained. The next was it explained that the inner part of the earth is in form of molten, uh, molten material because uh, if it, it is only possible when the, uh, the rings rotate and there is increase in angular velocity. So that happened over the course of time. But the major criticism of this theory was it explained that the sun rotates very slowly. Okay. So it according to it the rotation should be very fast. So if we are trying to explain it's a hot body which is emitting radiation it's getting cooled down and shrinking there should be very high rotation and very high velocity but in reality sun moves slowly so he could not explain uh, this phenomena under this theory and finally uh, he also could not explain that why uh, the inner planets and the outer planets have different composition why inner planets are make mainly made of rocks while outer planets are mainly gaseous in nature. According to his theory, all the planets should be made up of similar material. So that was a major criticism that nebular theory faced. The next was the planetesimal theory. The planetesimal theory was given by Chamberlain and Moulton in 1900. And what they tried to explain was a very different concept from the existing concept and the uh, forthcoming concepts as well. So according to this theory, sun was cold. So that's the most interesting part of this theory. He considered sun or the protosun as cold and this was the intruding star. So now as you can see here, you have sun and you have the intruding star. This sun is very cold. This is a cold mass and you have the intruding star. Now the intruding star is gradually moving closer to the sun. As it is moving closer to the sun, this sun, there is attraction forces and this attraction force leads to bulge on the sun. So that's the first stage. The sun is cold. There are two elements. One is the cold protosun and another, the, another is the intruding star. The intruding star is moving close by the attraction forces and that is leading to the bulge that is being created on the protosun. Once the bulge is being created, you have ejected mass from the sun and this ejected mass is known as planetesimal. Now this planetesimal which are of big size kind to accrete together or come close together. So you have these planetesimals which kind to come close together under one ambit and form the planet. So this is how he explained formation of planet and similarly 
he explained the formation of satellites around the planets. So his theory was that you have the intruding star that have movement around the cold protosun because of the attraction forces of the intruding star or the pull by the intruding star the, the protosun tries to bulge out as it tries to bulge out there is ejection of the mass and that ejection of the mass occurs at planetesimals over the time these planetesimals they try to aggregate or accrete together and form a big mass which is known as planet but the most important critique was it could not explain the different size of the planets that was the first thing so different sizes of the planet could not be explained and the next major criticism was there is a huge distance between the planet and the sun and how come there can be so strong force between these two was not explained by the planetesimal theory now we have talked about the nebula theory and the planetesimal theory let's move on to the basic differences between those now as we can see uh, as we discussed nebular hypothesis is due to the radiative uh, the radiation forces or the emitting radiations so it's the hot nebula that we are talking about and the planetesimal is the cold protosun so it's cold since it's cold it is getting accreted or aggregated towards the nuclei of the big planet so particles come and stick towards it so i have these so these will come and stick close to it so that would be due to the planetesimal hypothesis you have small planetesimals that are being aggregated towards the big ones while in case of nebular hypothesis there is ring formation as we discussed the uh, the first ring is the outermost ring or the first form planets are the outermost planets from the sun and then you move towards the inner planets and it could explain that earth has an atmosphere why according to planetesimal hypothesis initially earth did not had any atmosphere it also explained that planets and satellites were formed at the same time but according to nebular hypothesis they were formed at different time the farthest planet was formed first and then the closer planets were formed so this was the basic difference between nebular hypothesis and planetesimal hypothesis the next came in that was the tidal theory and this tidal theory was given by jeans and jeffries uh, in 1925 now this is another interesting theory because in the planetesimal theory we called uh, we talked about the cold sun while in this theory we talk about the hot sun and the intruding stars now an another interesting concept in this theory was this theory was based on newton's law of gravitation so that is another important thing to note in this theory it was based on newton's gravitational law so what this theory tried to explain was further interesting so it said it's made up of hot sun and you have the intruding stars and both of them are moving in their own orbits so you have a star moving in their own orbit you have sun in its own orbit now what happens is due to the gravitational pull this new, uh, intruding star comes close to the hot sun when it comes close to the hot sun so you have this intruding star this is the sun and this is the intruding star it's coming close to the hot sun the similar thing happens what was happening in the planetesimal theory so there is a bulge that has been created so you have a tidal bulge because of the hot gases that is being created on the sun and this is of the shape of cigar so you have a cigar shaped filament that has been formed but over the time this intruding star moves out in its own orbit so as it is moving away from the sun you have this section that gets detached so you have a detached filament and this detached filament is of the shape of cigar 
where it tried to explain that in most of the planets are not perfectly circular they have um, they are kind of in the shape of oblate spheroid as we say for earth so they are having more diameter towards the center and less towards the corners that was what he was trying to explain what jeans and jeffries were trying to explain in his theory so he had explained as the planet moved away in its orbit so it, the intruding star moved away in its orbit this uh, sun had a detached filament and this detached filament was of the shape of a uh, cigar and this was following this cigar shaped pyramid followed a spiral nebula i could say it was a kind of followed a spiral nebula path finally this led to contraction of the nuclei and formation of the planet and then around this cigar you had formation of the uh, satellites that revolved around these planets so it explained how planets evolved and finally how satellites evolved in the similar fashion now again there was lot of uh, debate that led to criticism of the tidal theory the foremost criticism was again the same as the planetesimal theory that there is huge difference between the sun and the star and if there is such a huge difference how could you explain there was a gravitational pull or gravitational attraction that led to bulging out of the regions from the hot sun and another important uh, uh, another important criticism was the distribution of the angular velocity and the mass could not be explained by this theory now comparing the two theories that's the tidal hypothesis and the planetesimal hypothesis let's understand the tidal hypothesis as we suggested is made up of the hot mass or the hot sun whereas it talked about the cold protosun when it talked about cold protosun there was a kind of accretion of the small planetesimals towards the bigger planetesimals and that led to formation of planets and finally it said that all the planets evolved and originated at the same time why in case of tidal hypothesis there was formation of a cigar shaped filament uh, and this cigar shaped filament was smaller towards the end and thicker or having a larger center it explained that they were formed by cooling down of this hot material so planets were formed by cooling of this hot material and finally uh, the earth was kind of formed from this cooling of the material so when the material cooled it became either liquid or solid form and this liquid or solid led to formation of planets while the gaseous form formed the atmosphere around it so whatever material cooled down it formed the planets whatever material was not able to cool remained as such in the form of gaseous atmosphere so that was what was explained under the tidal hypothesis why under the planetesimal hypothesis they said that sun was formed due to from a cold mass and that was ejected due to the attraction forces of the intruding star so it talked about the attraction pull and it talked about the gravitational pull so that was again one of the major differences so in this class we have talked about the four major theories on the origin of the earth we'll be talking about much of the contemporary and the recent theories in the further sessions you can subscribe to our channel for all further updates and for any doubts you can leave those as comment below we'll be more than happy to answer any of the doubts have a good day